as a as an episode when we look at second corinthians we see that uh, paul actually talks about uh, 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 a lot about his uh, uh, personal life and ministry or what he goes through the difficulties challenges that he goes through in ministry and he also talks about some of the you know some some of the not so nice things that are happening in ministry you know around that time right he talks about that also and he wants the church about that um uh, and also there are you know a lot of revelations which which um, uh, some of the things that he has shared uh, he shares here he has not shared in earlier uh, or uh, none of his other epistles especially about uh, you know if you look at second corinthians 12 he talks about how he was caught up uh, to the seventh heavens and you know his personal spiritual experience and encounter um, which he has not uh, shared in other places he shares here Okay, so it's a it's a very different uh, episode that we see, um, and uh, it's good to uh, so it, it's something that uh, he talks about the reality of ministry. You know, in those times, hardships, the the difficulties, the challenges. So uh, it's a good book to really understand the the reality of uh, ministry in those uh, in those times, and also you know I, I think in the present times also we can relate to it, right? Okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, chapter four. You know, if there are no doubts, uh, of course, you're free to ask. But if there are no doubts, we'll go on to chapter four and uh, where we left off, right? So he says, um, uh, I think verse 15, uh, sorry, um, let me go on to, um, we are hard pressed, we are not crushed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, not destroyed, okay? And uh, what is happening, he says, always carrying about in our body. That is, we are always carrying about in our body the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so what does he mean by that? Carrying out in in, in my body the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, let's look at that. Let me just present. Okay. Okay, so it's carrying about the dying of the lord okay the reality of uh, what he did on the cross is carrying about in the body okay the reality of that meaning what he did on the cross the victory that he purchased the uh, the 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 kind of uh, things that he went through the kind of persecution the kind of uh, difficulty the pain that he went through uh, the affliction uh, and uh, you know his dying on the cross. So he's saying, in a sense, when we when we go, we are carrying about in our body what what actually happened. You know, all these difficulties, all these challenges, uh, we are carrying about that the life of Jesus and the word used there is Zoe, the life of God, right? the God kind of life, the life of. Uh, uh, it's it's not just biological life, but it's spiritual life. It's God kind of life. The Zoe of God, the Zoe of the Lord Jesus may also be manifested in our body. Yes, we are persecuted, we are struck down, we are perplexed, we are hard pressed. Okay. And in, in our body, in our, in, our, in a physically, we are going through all kinds of discomfort, you know, even like the dying of the Lord Jesus, you know, this all kinds of discomfort and pain and all that we are carrying about in our bodies right always but but the good thing is this that the life of jesus the, the god kind of life zoe of life may also be manifested so which means that uh, you know we uh, we see that that's one of the key you know to acknowledge what the lord jesus did on the cross why he died on the cross what he did for us on the cross so that the life of Christ may also be manifested to acknowledge that each and every day that the Zoe, the life of the God kind of life may also be manifested in our bodies. Okay. Um, so which means when, when the life of God is manifested in our bodies and, and, you know, we are able to, you know, overcome this, right. Because it, it's, it's by the power of God. 
it's uh, it's um, when we are able to you know when the life of god is manifested uh, in my body it's it's made visible i'm able to over, overcome some of these overcome these challenges and live victoriously and live in faith and so on right? so we live um, so that uh, we live in this manner that the god kind of life may also be displayed in my body okay verse 11 to 15 okay um for we are so for for we who live are always delivered to death for jesus sake that the life of jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh so that death is working in us but life in you and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written i believed and therefore i spoke we also believe and therefore speak knowing that he who raised up the lord jesus will also raise us up with jesus and will present us with you for all things are for your sakes that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of god okay so what is he, what is he talking about you know he's talking about all the all the physical suffering all the uh, dangers he says you know death is working in us but life is working in you you know and verse 11 but we who live are always delivered to death for jesus sake you know it's like we are always at the at the threshold of death you know we're all almost there we're delivered to death for the sake of jesus you know that's the reality of the life and ministry at that time so he's saying we are, we are delivered to death for the sake of jesus for the uh, for the but that the life of uh, jesus i'm uh, sorry we, we who live are always delivered to death for jesus sakes that the life of jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh so we see the life of jesus zoe the god kind of life being manifested in our in our flesh in our in our mortal bodies that uh, the life of jesus is what brings the supernatural Right. We, so we are witnesses to that. We see that also being manifested, being made tangible. So without any, uh, without any excuse, I'm able to see that you know, very clearly that the life of God is manifested in our mortal flesh. Okay. So then death is working in us, but life in you, right? even as death works in us, and as we you know as we minister with the life of god now we come to you and we minister and life of god is working the life is working in you right you see the working of it um then and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written i believe and therefore i speak so it's uh, it says we have the same spirit of faith we have the same conviction and therefore we believe and also we speak knowing that you know this knowing you know this is our strong conviction right we we know that he who raised up the lord jesus will also raise us up okay. this is what has happened he's the first fruits we, we saw that right first fruits meaning the first of a kind which will follow right he's the first fruits which means there will be many who follow who are who will be like him we will be like him for, because he's the first fruits of the new creation so here says that um, um, he who raised up the Lord will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. So this is the faith. This is the belief. This is the, uh, this is the faith that we have. For all things, all the difficulties, all the challenges are for your sakes. That grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of god so if we go through these difficulties it is for your sake if we go through all these things like even um, living in such a manner that you know we are delivered up to death each and every day it is for your sake it says it is for your sake that grace having spread through the many you know that the grace of god through the message of the gospel this grace of god having spread through many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. 
right so many have received grace the grace of god many have experienced the grace of god their lives are changed their destiny is changed so there is thanksgiving they uh, they you know it results in thanksgiving may this cause uh, thanksgiving to abound to the glory of god okay and uh, you know it'll this results in the believers the church you know giving thanks to god for his glory right so verse 16 so then he says therefore we do not lose heart you know the first verse also he says we do not lose heart therefore we do not lose heart here again he he repeats that therefore we do not lose heart okay in verse 1 he says therefore we do not lose heart because we have this ministry we have this glorious ministry so we do not lose heart that that phrase lose heart you know that we do not lose heart that means that we do we are not discouraged we are not you know we are we do not give up um so we do not lose heart okay um let me just try and share that uh, the uh, greek word you know it 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 means that you know i we do not faint okay we do not uh, faint or we do not grow weary we are not exhausted okay we are not uh, you know we don't come to that place of being without life we are you know we do not lose heart okay so that is what he says we do not lose heart um, we don't come to that that kind of a state therefore we do not lose heart okay um so what is the reason is he shared all this the excellence of the power the knowledge of the glory of god you know is working in us uh, the life of god is manifest in us even though death is working the life of god is manifest in us you know for therefore you know for this reason okay excuse me for this reason we do not lose heart we are we are not weary we are not faint we do not give up okay even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal okay and then chapter 5 it goes on to another um, uh, you know kind of flows into chapter 5 with the same theme and right? so he's saying therefore we don't lose heart was 17 uh, was 16 even though our outward man is perishing you know the the outward physique the outward body uh, yes day by day uh, you know he's he's paul as a person he's growing old and he knows that one day he will you know he will uh, he'll come to the end of his physical life right and also in terms of hardships and all that you know there's uh, there's a lot of strain on his physical body right he's like uh, he's he's you know he writes about all the the, the blows that he's been getting the whippings uh, and also you know the fact that he's shipwrecked all that he writes about it a little later also right so he says um, we do not lose heart we do not even though our outward man is perishing what is happening yet the inward man is being renewed the, the that is the the spirit the soul is being renewed every day is being strengthened day by day okay um so that is uh, verse 16 right uh, just give me a minute verse 16 okay okay so yeah so he's talking about what is on the inside the spirit is being renewed or made new uh is is receiving new strength is receiving a freshness uh day by day okay so so that is what is happening the inward man is being renewed day by day okay um so uh, says for our light affliction okay this so it's it's amazing you know that he talks about all the kind of hardships and he says you know this is a light affliction 
okay you, you read about it and and sometimes you wonder you know can this can this really be seen as right right affliction you know so much he goes goes through so much that he and his team have gone through in the past you know running from one place to another and you know not being accepted and the and sometimes uh, you know even by his own countrymen and and also definitely by the roman soldiers and all that so um uh everybody calls it a light affliction right uh, we, we don't lose heart it's this light affliction which is but for a moment so now when we consider eternity okay, eternity is a it's a, it's a pretty long time right eternity in the light of eternity or when we consider uh, eternity you know it is when we compare it it is it's like a small time a small time frame it says it's but for a moment it's a very momentary right um and this light affliction is just for a moment and it's working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory okay so it is it is light it is not heavy and and these sufferings is momentary right it is a very short time uh, when we compare it to eternity and also it's working for us it's resulting in a far more eternal glory how can he say that because whatever troubles he is going through whatever difficulties he is going through it's it's for the sake of the gospel right it's for the sake of ministry and in ministry people are coming to know the lord people are getting saved and therefore is it's working out for a you know there's far greater result or it's being even more productive there's greater fruit and it's working out far exceedingly uh, far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory right um verse 18 while we look while we do not look at things which are seen but at the things which are not seen okay so which means that uh, well there are earthly things okay things that are seen meaning in the natural you know uh yeah there are some needs there are there are responsibilities there are things that we need to do um there are difficulties everything but our focus our preoccupation you know is not with those things okay what is it then we do not look at things which are seen you know to see to touch and feel you know to observe is the, the natural world the physical world so he's saying uh, we don't focus on those things our priority or what is far greater in importance to us are the things which are unseen the spiritual reality right so he's saying uh, we don't look at that or we don't focus on that for the things which are seen are temporary okay so which means that you know sometimes we we see that okay things that i can touch and feel you know these seem to be more permanent you know if it's a rock you know or uh, things that are around that seems to be more real to us why because we can with our senses we can we can experience them right but paul's perspective is totally different he's saying hey this is the reality that the things that you touch and see and feel these are temporary these are only for a very short time but the things which are not seen things which are unseen now referring to the spiritual realm now that is permanent that is eternal that is what is going to stay or the things of the spirit you know what you uh, what you're sowing to your spirit man the you know uh the life in the spirit now that is what is going to be eternal meaning it's going to last beyond this lifetime okay which is true right it's 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 not uh, because whatever we, in the natural that we see is only for this lifetime it could be whatever you know how many ever years but what is unseen the reality of the spiritual realm now that is going to take you beyond that it's going to last even beyond your lifetime 
here on earth. So that is unseen as eternal. Okay, so that's a very, very important spiritual truth for us to understand and for us to know as, as people of God. You know, this will keep us grounded. This will keep us on the right path. Give us right priorities. Right? Correct priority. What we should give importance to. What we should not give importance to. So this will help us. Yes. Okay, these are, these are not permanent. These are temporary things. You know, I should not be spending so much time on it or effort. Let me focus on things that are eternal. These things are eternal. It's going to last beyond my lifetime. So let me put an effort in that. Let me give it priority. Let me give it uh, importance. Okay? It's not saying that hey, uh, you know things that are off off the earth or what we uh, you know material things. These are you know these are not important. The thing is, these are necessities. Right? For our life on earth, these are necessities. We need it. Right? And the Lord knows that we need this for our life on earth. But to be focused, to continue to look at that, is to, look, is to lose focus on the eternal. And when we are completely focusing and we're looking at only what is the natural and physical, we lose focus on what is eternal. We take our eyes away. We're not able to... You know, we can't look at all things at once. Right? So Paul is saying that you know, we look at things that are unseen, which are eternal. Okay. Um, so let's move on to chapter 5. You know, he's just going into that. So in chapter 5, uh, we see uh, the same thought. You know, it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed we have a building from god a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked for we who are in this tent groan being burdened not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we, so we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay. So, um, so here is, is contrasting, you know, our, first he was talking about physical life, natural life and eternal life. And he is talking about, you know, our physical body and our spiritual body saying if our earthly house, he calls it a tent. Okay, so what is a tent? A tent is not a permanent dwelling, right? A tent is portable. You fold it and you roll it up and you move it wherever you want and then you put it up. And it's not, it's it's actually, it's a bit flimsy, right? It's made of maybe canvas or some other material and it's it's flimsy, right? It's, it's, you can't compare it to a, uh, a building made of stone, right? So saying, you know, if our earthly house is compared it to a tent, this tent is destroyed. Okay, once if if we, you know, uh, if our body is destroyed, which is like a tent, we have a building from God. Okay, so a building is stronger than a tent, is more permanent than a tent, right? So he's saying we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. So, so you know, this is my earthly house. It's a, it's a tent. It's, you know, it's temporary. Now, if this is destroyed, what, is, what happens? We have a building, you know, something which is permanent, not made with hands, meaning it's not a physical body. Right? It's not a physical house. It's not a physical body. Now, this tent house houses, uh, you know, my spirit. But you know, when this is destroyed, and when this tent is destroyed, when this outer covering is destroyed, then we have a building from God. 
something that is permanent, something that is, um, uh, you know, that is stronger. It's a house and it's not made with hands. It's not a physical thing. It is something that is spiritual and it's eternal in the heavens. So we have a spiritual body. Now in this we groan. Okay, saying in this we groan, you know, we complain. Yeah, okay, this, you know, the aches and pains, the limitations to this life, to this physical life. Like earnestly desiring. What is the earnest desire? To be clothed with our habitation. You know, to be, to have that spiritual body, to be clothed with that spiritual body which is from heaven, because that is spiritual without defect, without any limitations. Verse 3, if indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. In the sense, you know, this um, having been clothed, that uh, we shall not be found naked. In the sense that we should be clothed with the spiritual body. And when what causes us to be clothed with the spiritual body is only when we receive uh, the Lord as Lord and Savior. Okay, that is, only that, that is the only thing that qualifies us for the spiritual body. That is the only thing that qualifies of for the spiritual clothing, for this building from God in the heavens. Nothing else. You know, it doesn't happen naturally. Right? The only thing that qualifies is when I invite Jesus into my heart, when I experience salvation. So he's saying, if indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent, we groan. Okay. Again, he says, you know, in verse 2 also, he says, we groan. Why do we groan? We, you know, we desire to be, to experience that heavenly body. We, we desire to experience that spiritual body, that eternal body. Like, for we who are in this tent groan, being burdened. Okay. We are, we are burdened by this life. We are troubled. We carry a lot of, you know, all, all these things and, and, uh, uh, and like he, like he uh, explained, you know, the, all these things happen. We are hard pressed and ministry, all these things happening. So saying we, we, we groan, okay, we, we cry out, we groan. Um, yeah, let me just, uh, let me just check uh, that verse again. Um, chapter five and verse one. Okay. Um, I just want to check out that word. Okay, so it's a it's a longing. Like when when we say we groan, it's it's like a sigh. You know, we are looking forward to it. We groan. We uh, we sigh. We we are uh, you know our hearts are actually earnestly desiring that. Okay, looking forward to that. But the fact is that it's it's not there yet. Right. So we groan. We sigh. Um, look forward to it. Right. So he says in this tent we groan, being burdened, not because. We want to be unclothed in the sense, not that we just want to, uh, you know, this physical body to just go away. It's not that, but that we will be clothed with this mortality may be swallowed up by life. Okay, which means that mortal means, uh, you know, something that has an end, you know, something that comes to an end, something that uh, has the capacity to die. This mortal mortality may be swallowed up, may be you know covered and and uh, swallowed up by life itself. Right? That uh, see, it's it's not like we we don't want uh, you know it's it's not that we just want our body our life to end and uh, that uh, you know that there'll be an end to our physical body, but this mortality or this thing which will eventually die that it will be swallowed up okay which means it will be devoured it will be you know it will be completely uh, you know completely uh, destroyed or completely covered devoured completely taken up by what devoured by life okay so this mortality is completely you know, completely taken completely devoured completely swallowed up by life. So he's saying, no, I want to come to that 
place. And uh, when we read First Corinthians 15, uh, he talks about that, you know, this body is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. So he's talking about that spiritual body, a house not made with hands, meaning it's it's not something that um, is something that is has a physical origin or a human origin. And it does not have that kind of an origin. The physical body, yes, it has a human origin, right? Uh, a natural origin. But here, the spiritual body, it's something that is eternal. It has a heavenly origin. It's there in the heavens for us, right? So it is covered, clothed by, not mortality, by immortality. Okay. So, um, so... The desire is not just to be, you know, not just for the physical pain or the, or the limitation of the body, uh, you know, for that to come to an end. Yes, there is a desire, but the desire is to go beyond that. What is that, that, uh, that we will have that glorified body, right? So that will come, we know, at the coming of the Lord, okay, when we see him face to face. Right? So it says uh, in verse 5, let's read uh, verses 5 and 8. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Now who has prepared us for this? Right? Who has prepared us for this, uh, this kind of a thing, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, this mortality to be small, swallowed up by life? And who has prepared us for this? It is God who has prepared us. Okay. And he says, who has given us the Spirit, who has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Okay, So the Holy Spirit has been given to us and he's there as a guarantee. He's there, you know, uh, uh, earlier on we, we read that he is there uh, as a seal. Right? Um, where did we uh, read that? Um, Yeah. Um, yeah. We read in First Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter one, um, verses twenty-one and twenty-two. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Okay. Who has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So he's referring to the Holy Spirit and he's saying, Holy Spirit, Spirit has been given to our hearts as a guarantee, as a earnest, as a deposit, okay, as a, a deposit, and which means that there will be a time when this payment is full. Okay, he's there as a deposit. And we looked at the example of you know buying something on installment, right? You pay that earnest amount and it is yours. The the installment is being paid, the EMI is being paid, but you know that the payment will one day be full, um, you know, and then uh, fully realized. And anyway, you you still have the, uh, you know, you still have the product or you still have the vehicle with you, uh, but you know that there will come a time when, uh, when it will be completely fully yours, right? So the Holy Spirit has been given as a guarantee, as a proof that there's going to be a time when this, this will change when the body is going to be uh, swallowed up by life. Uh, you will not have these aches and pains anymore. There will be a glorified body. Okay, so saying who has prepared us? It is God who has prepared us. And what did He do? He has given us the Holy Spirit for what? As a guarantee. And that word, Greek word, araban, which means as a pledge, as a as a partial payment, as an initial deposit. Okay, so which means that. He has a claim. Okay, see so when you when you pay the initial deposit, actually that vehicle is yours. Right, you have a claim on that vehicle. Right, you can ride it. You can use it. Uh, it's actually yours. But you also know that there will come a time when that payment will be full, and it will be yours forever. Right? So similarly, the Holy Spirit has been given as He uses that. Uh, you know, uh, as as a, that word uh, which describes a partial payment, a pledge, um, and um, uh, which which will when when it's done, you you know that there's a claim. Uh, also, uh, that 
it will be completely redeemed right we are redeemed but we will be you know we'll experience this um, glorified body as well so he's saying you know therefore um um, who has prepared as the Spirit of God and is given as the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident. Okay. So the thing is that this truth has to be a reality in us. You know, this truth has to be a, become a revelation in us. Um, and uh, if if that is so, then we will live an overcoming life. Okay. We will not be troubled. No matter what happens on this earthly, in this earthly life we will not be troubled. Why? Because our focus is not on these things. You know, yes, we know. It's not like we are living in denial. You know, sometimes what happens is that we are saying, okay, no, this is not real. No, that's not what the Bible is saying. No, this is real. God has created this world. It is real. It is natural world. It is real. It, it doesn't mean that it does not exist. You know, it's... Bible never says that is this, all this is Maya, this pain is Maya, the suffering is Maya. No, Bible never says that. Right? The Word of God never says that. So the thing is that, yes, you know, what you say is, what you see around it is it is real. But I have great confidence because this is my perspective. You know, this is the truth that there will be, there will come a time when this will change. I will have a spiritual glorified body. And no, he's saying that we are confident knowing that while we are at home in this body, okay, we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord, and we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay. So we are walking by faith. We are not, we are not able to see what will happen, but we walk by faith. Through the eyes of faith, we understand, we know that this will what happen so it's i'm walking by faith okay, but this is the reality that even though i'm here we are confident that while we are at home in the body we are absent from the lord in the sense we we don't see him face to face we are absent from the lord but we live by faith we walk by faith and not by sight okay again he says in verse 8 we are confident yes well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay. So, in other words, you know, if it so happens that that we die, okay, that we are maybe martyred or whatever, if it so happens that uh, you know this hap this uh, there is death. So he's saying, you know, if it so happens, then we are confident, well pleased. Okay, that's how he looks at death itself. Right? Um, we are confident, well pleased, that to be ab rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We are confident, we are well pleased to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We know that, you know, then what happens, I'm not living by faith anymore. Faith has become sight or I'm actually experiencing it. I'm not living by faith. I'm actually seeing it face to face. Faith has become sight. No more walking by faith. Right? I'm well pleased, confident, knowing that to be absent from the body, when this is put away, I'm going to be present with the Lord. Okay. Verses 9 onwards. Therefore, we make it our aim. Therefore, we make it our aim. Whether present or absent to be well pleasing to him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are well known to God and I also trust are well known in your consciences okay so um so we here is saying you know therefore i'm making it my aim i'm making it my focus uh i'm making it my priority i'm making it my aim in life what is this aim to be well pleasing to him okay see i know that 
you know, when when I when I need when I put off this body, I will be. I need to be present with him. I will be present with him. So, since that is the reality, since that is my confidence, I make it my aim. I make it my focus to be always well pleasing to him, whether I'm in my body, you know, whether this body has to be taken out of the way, right, and I, I die. I want to be well pleasing to him, to be well pleasing to the Lord. The reason is that we must all appear before the judgment seat of. Christ and um, you know he uses that word judgment seat meaning um, bema right that is the word in fact in Corinth they had a, I think we looked at that earlier also in in one Corinthians chapter five I think we saw that there is there was a race platform and it was called bema uh, um, uh, sorry we looked at it in yeah chapter five chapter six so there was race plate platform and uh, it was where the, it was like a court of law and people would come present their case there would be others you know onlookers and so in first corinthians paul warns you know he says you know, why are you taking people to the to the court of law and you're taking a fellow believer and and all that and right? he's saying why can't you settle it right so he's saying here that um, you know, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, now Christ is going to uh, judge us and we must all appear before Christ. So um, uh, anyway, before that, uh, I just uh, missed out this one thing that when he says we make it our aim, he's saying we make it our, you know, study, focus. Uh, we put all our energy and our effort and our labor to be well-pleasing to him. Okay. Right, to be agreeable, acceptable, to to make sure that I'm pleasing him at all times. Right. So he, he said. So yeah. So uh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. Now the thing is this: uh, uh, we know that we are already accepted by God. You know, we are already accepted by Him because of the cross. We are, you know, we are already uh, received by Him. So we live a life. That is worthy of that. Okay. He has already accepted us, you know, in Christ. He has broken down, you know, that wall of separation. Uh, he has given us access to his presence. He's already, you know, he's saying you come, receive grace and mercy, so that you can live a life in that manner, in a pleasing manner. Okay. okay. Now, so the yeah, so we, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, he's saying, you know, he's, he's of course writing to the church and he's saying, writing to all believers. So will believers appear before the, before the Lord, you know, before the judgment seat? Yes, there is a judgment seat. There is a bema and, it, uh, you know, that we need to appear before Christ. And there is a judgment of all believers, all believers. It is not a judgment of condemnation. Okay, so it's not a judgment of, okay, now you, you, you cannot enter heaven and you enter heaven. No, it's not that. No, this is the judgment of believers. And what is this for? This is a judgment where, where you receive the rewards uh, where you, according to what you've done, good or bad. Okay, so he's saying uh, that uh, this, is, this is a judgment. This is not a judgment of salvation or condemnation, which is which what we see as the great white throne judgment, okay, which we read in uh, Revelation 20. Okay, now that is a judgment for those who have accepted the Lord, those who have not accepted. Now, this where here he's talking about a judgment of believers where. Uh, it's a judgment of rewards according to what we have done, according to uh, our level of obedience to the Lord, right? So, um, you know, on based on the call of God, based on what he has gifted us with and given us, you know, where we true to it, where we faithful to it. So it's, it's based on that. Okay? So he's saying, you know, I know the fear of the Lord. I know the, you know, he's saying, he used the word, the terror of the Lord knowing the terror of the fear, the severity of judgment, uh, of not receiving salvation, right? Uh, so I know that. So so therefore, I persuade others. Okay, we are well known to, uh, we persuade men. Okay, so, so if, on one hand, he's talking about the judgment of believers where uh, the Lord will judge and and whether they've done good or bad according to you know how they've lived their lives as believers, they're going to receive 
you know, uh, their reward will depend on that. Uh, and he's saying, you know, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, knowing the you know severity of uh, of of the Lord and the you know the the standard of the Lord, we persuade men, right? We persuade uh, people to come to saving knowledge of God. So he's to, here he's talking not about the judgment of believers. He's saying, you know, knowing fully well the severity of you know there is he will come as a judge so uh, we are uh, we persuade man, men and, uh, and and that is the ministry right persuading people to the uh, by by means of their life by means of their action by means of their teaching uh, by means of the ministry whatever they do it to invite people to receive jesus to invite people to follow the lord jesus Right, um, so he's saying that, um, and I trust are well known in your consciences, you know, and I know that uh, me, myself, my team, uh, this is how we live, and we know that this is why we persuade men. This is why we go and share and minister and, and persuade people to accept the Lord, right, and uh, and trust. And I trust are well known in your consciences. Uh, so you know, you know that this is how we live as servants of God. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I think we'll we'll stop here. So, which is, um, yeah. So verses twelve onwards, uh, we will look uh, at in the next class. So I just want to encourage us to just go through, just read through um, till where we have uh, seen, and uh, from chapter five. Verse 12 onwards, we'll look at it in the next class. Okay. Um, just a minute, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.